Tesla, right? Entrepreneurial, futuristic looking. Will it be the death knell of other cars? What did you expect? Uh, I don't know what I expected, but this wasn't it. I, I expected to be impressed, but I didn't expect to be astounded, and I'm astounded. I think this will be the death of other cars. <laughs> Seriously, Alan, uh, the thing about it is, it, it, it's not just futuristic and trendy, it's actually practical, and, yeah, and, and it goes like the clappers. It is futuristic and trendy, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. 2.4 seconds, as I said before, to uh, 100 kilometres an hour, is that's hypercar. And to get that performance anywhere else, you're going to have to pay a million bucks. Okay. Or more. So this... Let's, uh, well, so we'll stop there, okay. and then we're saying, OK, uh, let's have a look at the outside of it, and then we'll go for a drive. All right. Hmm. So from the outside, I've got my, my the bag and the key is actually inside the car as we speak. Normally what would happen is you come up to the car, the mirrors fold out and the doors come out, but since the bag's inside, you just press that and the handles come out, so my, I can now get my hand inside. Uh, it's a five door, meaning that it's an execu hatch, as I call it. Okay. Like the old Rover ST1 of the late oh, okay. 70s. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Very nice car. This one leaves that for dead. It looks smart. What do you think? The design of it, I love this line of the windows. Yeah. It, it, this this line here is, to my mind, extremely. And did you notice the camera here? Yeah. What does that do? It photographs it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh one of those cameras. <laughs> it's a camera. Uh, there's also cameras elsewhere around the car that uh, constantly monitor where the car actually is and who's around the car. It's also what does the blind spot monitoring. And there's not. Uh, little icons in the mirrors like there is with most other cars. It's all on that screen inside. Yeah, we'll talk about that as we go along. Yeah. So I think there's a huge issue there about being confident in knowing that the car is actually doing things sure. around it. It's actually seeing what's happening. It doesn't give you a picture, it gives you a schematic of it. It does. But, but it says, here's there's lines on the road. I can see that. Yes. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't really trust it as yet. Now, they don't give the press cars autopilot, probably for the best, nor does it have smart cruise control. Oh, okay. Both of those, and nor does it have automatic wipers. All of those things will come in an upgrade. The smart wipers are coming in due course. But when this car goes off the press fleet and is sold, they'll simply flash the, um, the firmware and it'll all of a sudden have autopilot. So it'll be able to actually drive itself. The ladies that we saw yesterday at the Tesla showroom tell us that you can just send this off to find, not necessarily in Australia, but in other places, that you can send this car off and it'll find itself a parking spot to park there. I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, that ultimately comes for a, a great benefit in a number of reasons, not the least of which is you don't have to fight your way out of the car yeah. when you park it. So we might be able to have narrower parking spots. But if it all goes horribly wrong, you won't know where your car is. That's right. So, inside, these doors open very wide. You don't like this bit here, do you? No. Well, of course, I'll open this up, but this much of the door is just metal. There's, not, there's, there's, no, there's nothing behind it. And you can see here that it's just folding over. Now, if you're in a confined space, like in a tight garage or, or whatever, there's an extra 10 centimetres or eight centimetres of door that doesn't need to be there, it can just be cut quite down. So it's just for a design line down the outside of the car. Um, but if it parks itself, you won't have to get out. I don't want it to bloody park itself. Oh, voila. Yeah. I also like the interior, the design. Well, why don't, you have, a, why don't you have a seat inside? Let us sit inside. You mean in the back? Yeah, well, anywhere you like, so long as you're inside. Well, you know, you know me, I like I'm going to show you. Now, we have frameless windows. That glass area is quite small. Put that down, and I'll close the door. There's no motorised doors here. This is all push and shut yourself. What do you think? You see, this um, shape of the seat is very futuristic. It is elegant, mind. isn't it? It yeah, is elegant. You look at uh, driving an Audi the other day and it looked 
old fashioned and, and maybe it was wanted to be wanted to be that elegant. This looks modern. This well of course they use these cars for uh, uh, executive transport to and from airport. So perhaps it might be that in that mode you'd have the seat forward a little bit more, you'd have a little bit more space in the yeah. back. Well, the knee, knee room's not bad, it's the support under your thighs, yeah. it's a little bit short and, and, and the floor is a bit like the old four-wheel drive with yeah. a high uh, the clearance, yeah. you know, that, that it makes you sit up with your knees around your ears a little. It does. Well, there's no key to this car. Mm. There's no start button, there's no nothing. Mm. There's no buttons, period, except for the glove box and the hazard flashes. There's a couple of buttons on the steering wheel and the windows, but that's it. So in order to start the car, you just get in, put your foot on the brake, put it in gear with the gear lever over here. We're now ready to go. So you can see down here that it's in ludicrous mode. Mm. So I'm Lud just gonna pull it. That's it, but it, the actual setting's in comfort too. Yeah, so, so I that's... can accelerate hard, but I can not necessarily be so firm as to be uncomfortable. Correct, so that's, um, that's uh, uh, this suspension and steering and so forth. Mm. So what I'm going to do is indicate mm. and I'm going to give it some beans. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, I, I think I can cope. Are you, are you hold, oh, I'm not sure you can. Are you ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Oh. This car will go from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.4 seconds. Two, Point four seconds. That's unbelievable, isn't it? So we're talking Veyron territory. This car's three hundred odd thousand dollars, and it's all-wheel drive. It's got two engines, one in the front, one in the back, and uh, batteries right along the underfloor. The thing about it is that makes it so unreal. It, it was almost like you were instantly on a roller coaster. A roller coaster, don't, you don't think so much about acceleration. Yeah. You just think about whooshing. We well, don't going. think about acceleration until you're actually accelerating. But what? have you been on that ride at Dreamworld, the, the rail gun ride? No. It fires you out. That has the same acceleration as this. 2.4 seconds to 100 kilometres an hour. I think... Um, I can't think of a time when you would want to do that. I can't think of a time. You can hear how quiet this is. Now I've got the air conditioning on. Uh, first, there's a few facts. I did about 200 kilometers yesterday um, and the charge went down pretty quickly. I stopped at Tesla where you came to meet me and put it on the fast charger. There's three modes of charging. There's the one you use at home, just with your normal trickle charge, and that will give you a couple hundred kilometres overnight, ish, mm. give or take. 20 or 30 kilometres per hour? Of charge, that's right. Yeah, it might be as low as that. Yeah, That's right. Now, they've got what they call destination charging, which is the next level up, and that's three phase. Mm. Um, I do understand you can have that put in at home if you have three phase, three phase available. Yes. Some of the earlier electric cars would only charge you that way. That's right. The Mitsubishi Miev was yeah. like that. Yes. Uh, and so you, they wouldn't lend me that car unless I had three phase That's power right. at home. That's right. And I think you're probably best not being lent that car from being perfectly frank. Um, now, well, well, yeah, there's a bit of a con you can do with it anyway, but it, we have moved enormously. So that, that will have. give you about, what, 80, no, like 40 kilometres no, per the, an hour? No, no, the destination charge will give you 81 kilometres per hour of okay. charge. Hmm. Then there's the Tesla supercharger, 240 amp thing, and it looks hmm. like a petrol bowser. Mm -hmm. It looks like a really thin petrol bowser. Now, those are the ones that we saw yesterday at Tesla, and they're all over the place. They will do 500 kilometres of charging per hour. 500 kilometres per hour. So this, when I when we left Tesla yesterday, had 610 kilometres worth of charge. And because you've been driving in ludicrous mode, it's, it's very careless of you. I, I really <laughs> wish you wouldn't drive in careless. It's in, all my fault. In ludicrous mode. Thank you. I'm glad <laughs> you agree. We're now down to 475. So, what it's trying to, to, I suppose, get into the marketplace is the fact that electric cars 
are better for the environment. And they're better for the environment because the CO2 from a 500 or 600 kilometer charge is less than the CO2 from a fossil fuel yes. uh, trip on the same, yeah. on the same thing.